an exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. I'm Mr. Magazine. And it's Saturday Bolo What Sold on eBay and Take It Away, Mr. Magazine. All right. We're going to give a little dosage of some magazines this week. Oh, nice. Starting out with the Newsweek from uh, 1983 with uh, not Neil Patrick Harris, but Neil Patrick the Hacker. Oh. You, know, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Um, so anyways... Uh, what I'm trying to explain to you is anything computer-related is going to sell, especially vintage. This is about computer hackers in the 80s, and it sold for 16 bucks. And that actually seems low. It does seem low. And, uh, well, 17 plus shipping, so. Yeah. But, yeah, we've had it for, nah, not six months, maybe six, six months, months listed. Yeah. But, you know. but I think it's probably one of those things, <clears throat> if I know your listing process, you gave it to the gentleman who basically just pounds listings yeah, out. Yeah. So. Quantity, not quality. You know, yeah. You got it. So, I mean, he did list the hacker. In yeah, there, right. So. No, he did, he did you know, fine. I, but, but, uh, but again, you... And again, it's one of those things where if I put 40 bucks on it, maybe I'll sell it a year from now for 35 Right. Where we put it up for, say, $18. It didn't sell. We put it in the store for 25 They make an offer 16 whatever. We move so, on. Yeah, yeah, no, nothing wrong with that yeah. whatsoever, but yeah. All right. Next up, uh, tattooing by women. Oh. Um, this must have slipped by me because I think oh. it would be better than this as well because... Not only is it an odd title, but it's the first issue as first well. First issue, yeah. So this one I think went for around twenty. You know, maybe we could you know hung on for another ten bucks down the road. I don't know, but we did move it out. But I guess the, I guess to anybody watching this, I, I I guess not. On the one hand, you're leaving money on the table. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you're making good money because right. you're probably paying fifty cents well, to a dollar, if that much, for those magazines. Right. And it sold within a week or two. Okay. The listing. So yeah. yeah. Can't argue with that. So yeah, it's one of those. <clears throat> I know we tend to both be the long dime as opposed to the short nickel. However, right. you that was like a medium seven and a half cents. Oh, all right. Next up, that's what to buy. This is what not to buy. These are really, most of these are sucker buys. Really? Because they look really cool. They're oversized. They're vintage. Andy Warhol uh, also Weber. is behind the first issues. Yeah. yeah. Um, some do go for a lot of money, but most of them, for, any, for whatever reason, I can't get the price for them. I mean, there's no mailing label. It's nice shape, Charlie Sheen, 1987. I took, I think, around 20 bucks for it. Well, and I think one of the big problems with those is they have to go priority because those shipping, are oversized. Yeah, shipping was 11 bucks, yeah. And uh, some of those issues are too big to fit in the Life magazine bags. Yeah, with the Life they're, magazine, they're like very long. To, yep. You need to have special packing materials yeah. and all that in order to ship them out. So yeah, but you're talking almost three years. We had it listed and it oh, only wow. went for 20. So I mean, you know, at some point you got to bite the bullet and say, hey, yeah. I made money, I didn't make a lot, but, you know, it's very cool. Sold it, move on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And maybe you see Charlie Sheen with the, you know, the blue eye shadow down the road. Who knows? Nice. <clears throat> Next he, up. I think he's winning. He's got yeah, Tiger Blood. Of course. Of course he is. Oh. Rare Magazine. I think it's rare. Again, a little cheap, but we sold it. E-Week Magazine, Bill Gates on the cover from uh, 2008. So definitely anything like that, though. Anything computer <clears throat> and we have a video that may have just come out. Um, you may have just seen her, or maybe coming out shortly, talking about some video game uh, things that I had purchased and that I just threw them away. Uh, threw them away. I put them in a uh, drawer uh, in order to be taking a look at them, pulling them out in a few years. Not necessarily a bad thing to do if you come across computer magazines, because sure. again, that is going to be collectible for a long, long, long time. It, it's not a flash in the pan kind of thing. People are right. going to be interested in the history. So if you do <clears throat> come across a large lot of stuff and you can't really get to all of it, if you take the computer side of magazine, uh, things like this, and put them off in the corner and list what you can out of the rest of them, yeah. you won't be upset in five years when you find this magazine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, any computer you know, CEO, whether it's Google, oh, yeah. anything, know, Facebook, Gates, anything, crazy, anything. Yeah. They, don't, they all sell. Yep. Moving on, uh, Vogue. Everyone loves oh. Vogue magazines. This is a, oh, my a doozy, gracious. 1931, Tiffany and & Company. And the condition was probably good at best and definitely wear on the spine and bottom. And still went for 180 bucks. So those are definitely uh, – how long have you had that listed? Uh, almost a year. A year, okay. Yep. Yeah, any of the old Vogue, when you find them out there, they are very, very difficult to find. They've got beautiful advertisements. They're a little oversized. Great magazines if you find them out there, though. Be willing to pay 15, 20 bucks a piece on them. I mean, honestly, you, you can't. I, I think I paid more than I might have paid double that. So the guy had, I don't know, 50 of them. Oh, know, so, wow. Yeah. You stepped up to the plate. Yeah, I did. Um, and, you know, I didn't use your famous word, Art Deco, but you can certainly throw that in there, too. Yes, you could. Yeah. All right. Nice. 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 Yes, I, oh, I did not click on this one. There we go. <laughs> I don't think if we, have we discussed this one before? It's an older one, but I did no, see it. All right. Not. So, 
Uh, we're from Rochester. There's a Rochester Lancer soccer uh, program. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Um, I think it's going to be around 1980s. It went for $157. Do not ask me why. But I it's certainly, was just going to ask you why. Yep. We do not know. The listing was very vague. It just said you yeah, know, they're, didn't even they're playing Washington Darts. It said Aquinas Stadium. And uh, he didn't even put NASL into it, championship, nothing like that. So... Something in there is pretty good, I think. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe Pele paid a visit. I have no idea. Yeah, but, right. Who? Uh, you know, and I don't think there's a second picture. Nope. So imagine what it would have went for with a little better <laughs> listing. <laughs> Who knows? Or maybe it would have went for less. Who knows if there's something not in there that they're hoping to buy. You know? Wow, so, that's you know, insane. I look like Mr. Magazine, don't I? That is insane. No, I'm, I'm very impressed by that because yeah. um, usually I can get 10 to 15, maybe 20 bucks at best out of a yeah. soccer program. Sure. Or football, as our friends across the pond call it. Yeah. Um, oh, there you are. You yeah. doubled, doubled oh, it up there. Yeah, we sold yeah, another yeah. one. Yeah. Um, my first thing over here is Handbook on Infantile Paralysis Booklet 1951 Lysol. $16.17. Free shipping. Happy to have it gone. Uh, it took five years. Do you know what infantile paralysis is? Is it what it sounds like? Babies that are paralyzed? It's uh, polio. Okay. Now I would list it with polio, and I would definitely list polio in the listing, and I would definitely list it at a higher price. Um, hmm. Ended up being happy just to let it go because it had been in 2017. Now I know people have asked me before, hey, you've got this stuff. Why are you letting it go for that price? Why don't you go through your listings and fix them up and ask higher prices? Too much time. Move on. List some new stuff. I've got enough stuff. I've got twenty five to 40,000 unlisted items, so I say... Learn from you know, learn from my mistakes. Don't do them a second time. Be happy with the money that I get out of it, and just move it on out. And I would list it differently now. Um, next item I have over here. This one I thought was really interesting. Oslo, Norway. Okay, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, yep. sure. Uh, Ice cart. Uh, oh, we do have the we do have fans in Norway, so they'll tell me how terribly I, I butchered that. A uh, street map with public transport network, nineteen ninety one. The, the crazy thing about this is I think I took an offer of $18 on it. It shipped to somebody in Portugal, which why somebody in Portugal is buying a map of Norway, I'll never hmm. know. Um, must have taken a wrong wrong turn in Albuquerque. Um, <laughs> and it cost $15 shipping. Wow. So they paid $33 to get this delivered to their door. But I guess the point is maps don't necessarily have to be old to sell. Uh one of the bigger sucker bets that I've ever come across are the 1960s and 70s gas station maps in, for the United States. Those tend to be 2 to $3 maps, generally right. speaking. you got to yep. lot them up in order to move them on out, and you're happy when they finally move. Maybe you can get 5 bucks if you hold out and wait on it. And here's a map that's 25 years, 30 years newer than that, and it went for $18 plus $15 shipping. Wow. Yeah, exactly. When you, when you, when you step back yeah. and you look at it that way, you say, whoa. Uh, next item we have up over here, the Robert Davis Association March Sheet Music 1903 New Jersey Politics. Wow. Now, this is one of those cases. I mean, take a look at that condition. It's it's ratty. Yeah. Um, tears, and it's got folds and creases. And if there's a condition issue, this has it. Um, but I did a little bit of research, and it turns out that Robert Davis over was really big in New Jersey politics, obviously, as I listed it in my thing. Um but he was almost like a, allegedly uh, fixing elections and all that kind of stuff mm. over there. So he, he was a big boss man over in New Jersey politics. That's where a little bit of extra research helped me out. Now, you aren't in a position where you could pay anybody to do that. And right. it's not worth your time to have him do it because... I didn't know what I might find when I started the research. Turned out to be interesting. I put New Jersey politics in and ended up selling. Yeah. The funny thing is somebody made me an offer of like $15 on it when it was up for auction. And I said, it's better than that. I just know it yeah. is because I can't find any of them out there. So I put it up at the 44 and somebody ended up paying the full price nice. in the store. Yeah. So definitely if you do have something rare and you feel it's really good, do hold on to your price. A lot of times you'll get it. Um, the next item we have over here, that is one creepy cover. Um, Poppy Glare, is that what it's called? <laughs> oh, wow, I oh. see what you did there. Um, <laughs> I did put this up just to cover up in the um, uh, post area 
Uh, if you're not checking them out, do check them out. I, I try to be funny every day. Try is the key word because a couple of times I've uh, landed with a big thud and people are more than willing to tell me when I'm not funny over there. Um, but I believe it was uh, one of our viewers said, holy hell about this cover because that is just one creepy cover. Yeah. Uh, it did end up going for the $38. The reason why? Salvador Dali. He is definitely a keyword that you want to use um, whenever you have it in there. There's, And I should have probably put something else in there about Salvador Dali, and I didn't. Uh, he's in the table of contents. <clears throat> trust me on that. Yeah, he still sold it. It's still sold for $38. But he is definitely one of those other keywords, like uh, Mr. Magazine was mentioning earlier, Art Deco, Salvador Dali. If he's in there, I mean, don't just use them randomly. Sure. But uh, the next item we have over here... I picked up a large collection of these off of eBay, as a matter of fact, and want to give a shout out to the subscriber that turned me on to this uh, listing. It was back a year a year ago. They said, hey, you might be interested in this. I don't want to buy it. I don't have the room for it. Um, so I ended up buying a lot of Scientific American. Those are magazines that a lot of people sell too cheaply. They'll sit there and they'll list them and they'll see that everybody's asking 10 bucks on them and they'll ask $10 on it. It's better, they're better magazines than that, but you got to take the time to go through them. Um, I've got five pictures up on this one over here because I was able to find some interesting things in there. But right there is another keyword, asbestos, that definitely does sell items. Um, you know, and there really wasn't a lot going on in this issue, which is why I did the Johns Vanville uh, asbestos. There's also some World War I ads in there. But you, you just kind of throw a couple of other miscellaneous pictures up, figure, ah, people might take a look at it over there. But definitely do take a look at uh, things. If, you, if it has asbestos in it, do mention it. It's a keyword. And the la last item I have over today, I think we're just going to do a mic drop on. Win Magazine. Oh, here we go. Win Magazine, December 1st, 1981, Apartheid, South Africa, rugby team, nuclear freeze. What's uh oh December 1, 1981? I thought there was like a code number 11981. <laughs> Not just December 1. All right. So Win Magazines, um one of the two of us is probably the world's foremost expert on Win Magazines and probably is the world's foremost collection of Win Magazines for sale. And the other person mm. Is insanely jealous of that and does not like Win Magazines. Mm. So do hit the like button if you could, and we will yep. see you next video. Take care. Bye bye.